One thing I've been asked about a lot here lately is how to update the firmware on the Ender 3 S1 Pro. And that's what this video is all about. So let's jump right into it and get started. First off, why would you want to update the firmware on your printer? Um, the main reason is to get new features. Um, if you're having a problem, sometimes that can help also. But um, main reason is for new features. Like for instance, if you have the laser engraving module for the Ender 3 S1 Pro, you'll need the newer firmware to be able to switch back and forth between the printer head and the laser engraving head. I do not have that, but I keep mine updated because I like to have all the new features and all that. So. One thing there is to know is there is some risk that comes with this. I've heard of people bricking their printers. Not sure if they really brick them or not, but the firmware fails or you interrupt it or what have you, it, it can cause problems. So be careful of that. Do this at your own risk. I myself have never had any problems with it. I've updated several times and I've actually rolled back the firmware just so I could do this video and no issues there either. So there's a few things you need. Uh, you need a computer with internet access so you can download the firmware. Some media to transfer the firmware to the printer. There are two different places that have firmware. There's the main board and then there's the display. And we need different media for each of those. So we're gonna need a SD card and a micro SD card. I'm gonna try to use just a micro SD card and a SD card adapter and see how that works. Another thing to know is these cards need to be eight gigabytes or less because they need to be formatted a specific way and to format them that specific way, that's a requirement. I am going to actually use a 16 gig card that I had laying around from an old Raspberry Pi project and I'm going to repartition it into an eight gigabyte card and I'll show you how I do that. But if you have a eight gigabyte card or less, you don't even have to do that part of it. So let's jump in and we'll get started. One thing you should do before you get started is note the firmware version you're on. So to do that, hit settings and about. We wanna note the FW version and the screen version. That way when we're finished, we can see that the update was successful. I usually just take a picture of the screen for reference. Now one more thing, we wanna check and see what chip version our printer has. So to do this, we unplug the power cord and then remove the drawer from the printer. Now we want to carefully flip the printer onto its back. To remove the back cover, we'll need the 4mm and the 2mm Allen wrenches. Now let's remove the four smaller bolts toward the corners of the bottom panel. Now we want to remove one bolt from each side that's closest to the center. These inner bolts not only hold on the gantry, but also hold on the bottom panel. Now that we have those removed, we can open the printer, exposing the main board. The chip is located right here. As you can see, mine has the STM32F401. The 401 is the number we're looking for. Now that we have that information, we can go ahead and close the printer back up. As far as I know, the chip is either a 401 or a 103. Mine happens to be the 401, which is the newer one. Now we can flip the printer back upright. Replace the drawer and plug the power cable back in. If the cards you have are eight gig or less, you can skip this segment and go straight to downloading the firmware. So this is a 16 gigabyte card and I'm gonna make it into an eight gigabyte card so we can format it properly. So let's go to run, Windows key R, and then you wanna type this here, disk mgmt.msc and hit okay. Okay, now we'll maximize that now you can see I have two disks on my computer, and I know I've already gave a disclaimer, but do this at your own risk because if you mess with certain things in here, you can mess up your computer. But if you just focus on this 
This is my 16 gig card here, but it shows 14.84 gigabytes. If I just focus on that one and don't mess with these others, we'll be fine. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click on this and I'm just gonna delete volume. Hit yes. Okay, now I have an unallocated 14.84 gigabytes. All right, so now I just want to right click on it again, hit new simple volume, and it'll pop up with this wizard. Hit next, I'm just gonna type, now this is in megabytes, so 8,000 megabytes is a eight gig. So I'm just gonna make 8,000 megabytes. Hit next, and this one is gonna hit next again. And then we're gonna have to reformat this anyway, so I'm just gonna leave this alone and hit next again and finish. Okay, now you see I have, I have 7.02 unallocated and 7.81 FAT32 formatted. All right, so that's all we need to do here. And I've actually changed this card into an eight gigabyte card. So let's just minimize that. And we'll go to the file explorer. Now I wanna right click on this new volume here and I want to format. And now this box pops up and I want to say the FAT32 and then also this 4,096 bytes allocation unit size. That's an important thing. And that's what you can't get to if you have a bigger card. So now we have that option. I'll leave that alone, make it a quick format and hit start. And it's gonna say, uh, it's gonna erase all the data, but we don't have anything on it. So hit okay. Format complete, and okay. Okay, now we have this card ready to go for the ender. And now let's go get the firmware and put it onto the card. So we'll jump over here to Chrome and go to www.crealitycloud.com. That's where you're gonna get your firmware. In the top menu here, this might have changed, but it's down here somewhere. You go to more and downloads. And now we want to select firmware right here. Okay, so we want to go to Ender Series and we want to scroll all the way down till we see Ender 3 S1 Pro. And that will give us the versions of firmware that are out there. And this is, each one of these has both the display and the main board in there. Now, if you have the F103 chipset, you're gonna have to do a little more homework. I have the 401 and all the new ones work for that. If you go over to the description, you can see it says right there, motherboard main control chip version is the STM32F401. Now, you might have to go all the way back to this one if you have the 103. And you see right here it says STM32F103. So you might have to use that one. But we're gonna go to the latest one here because I can. I'm not gonna go to this one. This is, um, I think Japanese, yeah, supports Japanese and Korean, um, but I am going to go to this one here. It's the same actual version. It just uh, has languages in it. So I'm gonna to go to this one and download it. So you click on it and it pops up in your downloads here and starts downloading. Okay, now that's downloaded. You can see it downloaded in a .rar format. So you need a program called WinRAR if you don't have that already. A lot of people already have it. So if you do, you just click on it. If not, you need to go download WinRAR. I'll click on that and you'll see it opens up in that program. And I'm just going to close down what's behind me here and just drag that to my desktop. And I can close that down and I'll go to, I have everything hidden on my desktop so you can't see it, but you can see right here, it is the Ender 3 S1 Pro firmware right there. So we open that up. And there's a little readme in here and it tells you how to go about doing this stuff. So the, a lot of it's in Chinese, but there is the English in here also. So you can see we have the right version for our printer and you can see, and it also tells you that it's a, this is for the main control 401, like I said, and for the display firmware, we want to format the, uh, the card 
and select 4096 for allocation size and then put these on there. And we do the same thing for the main firmware update. So let's start with the, we'll do it in the order that they, they suggest. We'll do the display first. For the display firmware, we need to put private and the DWIN set and the firmware Zlib into onto the card at the same time. So all three of those. Let's go ahead and open another Windows Explorer. We right click on this, we're gonna say, open a new window. And now we're gonna drag this over to one side and select that for the other side. Now we can see both of them at the same time and we just want to make sure we're on new volume here. We're gonna select firmware and then hold down control and select private and DWIN set. And then we'll just drag those over to the SD card. Okay, now we have those on the SD card. Let's go update our display. Remove the display from the bracket and lay it face down on the table. Then unplug the cable from the top of it. To open up the display housing, we'll use a 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench. Completely loosen all four of the screws holding the back on. Once they're all loosened, just lift the back off of the display and set it aside. Now we'll insert the micro SD card with the firmware on it into the display. And plug the display cable back in. Now carefully flip the screen over so we can see the display. Now turn the power onto the printer to start the firmware update process. A couple things I want to mention here is Yours might look a little different because different firmware versions will have different updates. And also I sped the video up quite a bit to make the video a little shorter. So be patient and let it do its work. When it's finished, it should look something like this. Now that it's complete, turn the power to the printer off Flip the display back over and remove the SD card from the display. This is very important. Do not leave the SD card in the display. And now unplug the display cable. Now we'll reattach the back by setting it in place and tightening all four screws. Now reattach the display cable and put the display back on the display bracket. I'm gonna use the same micro SD card in an SD card adapter to update the main board. Okay, now that we got the display portion of it done, let's delete these off of here. Hitting the delete, hit yes. And now we'll take the STM32F4 update and drag it over to the SD card. All right, now that we have that on the SD card, let's go and complete the update process. Okay, so we're almost there, but I'd like to take a quick moment to ask you, if you find this helpful and you find my content enjoyable, please consider supporting the channel. I'd like to make a lot more videos like this and your support helps a lot. It goes a long way to help me make more videos and do bigger projects and stuff like that. So consider supporting. There's a link in the description. Liking, subscribing, and sharing videos helps a lot to get the videos out there a lot more. And I just appreciate your watching. Now to update the mainboard firmware, insert the SD card and turn the power on to the printer. Now once again, be patient and let it do its work. Once it's fully booted up, the firmware update's complete. To check and make sure it was successful, click on Settings and then About. You can see that the FWVR and the ScreenVR are new versions. Now turn the power to the printer off and remove the firmware update SD card. 
Okay, so that's how you update the firmware on your Ender 3S1 Pro. I hope you got yours updated and your printer still works. And if you have any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to help. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.